Today we're continuing one of my favorite, favoritest series is that we have on the channel, classical music. And people were saying like, that if you get classical music, you just get it. There's no lyrics, there's no words, there's no like specific meaning. It's up to the person to interpret it really. Even if the composer has like a direction they want it to go, you can feel it and interpret it however you do personally. And I feel like that is what with classical music makes me so in love with it basically. But for today we have 100 most famous classical pieces. Now you guys know that a big argument we always have in the comments, me, a Beethoven stan, but you may like Strauss, you may like um, Bach, you may like any of these other phenomenal composers. But me, I always have to defend Mr. Beethoven and I'm getting sick of it. So anyone who else who would like to take up the <laughs> energy, please join my side and help me. But like I said, we have the 100 most famous classical pieces. Let's get into it. Subscribe for new here, like the video. Um, check out the Patreon, it is linked down below. Um, that's where I do any content that I can't put on YouTube and help your girl get to 10K over on Instagram that is also linked down below and on the screen right there. But enough jibba jibba, let's get into these classical pieces. I, I already know it's gonna be a lot of Beethoven, but let's see. Top 100 pieces. Ooh, Ooh wait, whoa, 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 whoa. This one sounded like sweet, like very soft and somber. Franz Liszt, L this German, Liebestrom, number three. This is, I love doing these videos too, cause it gives me like a lot of content that I can research and listen to on my own time. Cause if there's no way I've heard a hundred of these, there's no way. That one sounded really good. Dramatic, that one. Bach. Bach? And from the last few reactions we've done, wasn't Bach, I always thought he was like a, not him with an electric guitar, but I always thought he was like a more dramatic, like he has the pieces where there's like different sections and it builds and comes down and builds again. And they're like just, I don't know, there's different chapters in the composition for Bach. This one's scary. C minor? Like that one, I'm not gonna lie, that one wasn't very pleasant to the ear. C sharp. Prelude in C sharp minor. Sergi Rachmaninoff. Jeez, that one sounds like you've just been heartbreaking or someone you've loved has died or very dramatic though. Okay, aside from like the emotional ones with like trumpets and a lot of brass, I really like waltzes. There's just a sweetness and like etherealness to them. Like you're floating through the sky. I love waltz um, pieces. Like he can't tell me that doesn't hit. Bay. Ludwig. I don't know why I hold him to such a high pedestal, I just do. He's my favorite composer, which I am sure a lot of you will probably say I'm basic for, but that's okay. Beethoven is like, when it comes to classical, he's it for me. No, <sighs> that one seemed emotional. See, this one makes me want to run. Carl Jenkins. Was he an American? Gustav, hold on. This is the first time we've ever, or I've ever heard like, not lyrics, but there being vocals on a classical track. I always expect it just to be the instruments, but there's someone singing here, like it's opera. Opera and classical music do kind of tie together when you think about it too. Like, I feel like classical music and that kind of composition obviously came before opera, but opera, I think, magnifies it and builds on top of it, right? Someone let me know if I'm on the right track here. Cause wasn't it like classical music from like the 1400s? I think we've even heard some pieces that were like 800, like the year, you know? Stop horse! Horse races is what this is giving. 
Or, yeah, War 2. I've gotta, yeah, I've gotta check that one out. Franz von Suppe? Suppe? Light Calvary Overture. This is like run towards battle, you're about to defeat your enemy type of bop. Friends had, he did something with this one. Mm, mm. Is that like a flute? Mm. I like this one too. The Thieving Magpie Overture. What's an overture? Because this is a re repeating word by Rossini. Rossini or Rossini? Oh, 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 oh. I like this one. Uh, Beethoven again, but him young. Minute in G. <gasps> Minute in G. So a lot, I think these names, they're either going to tell you what the emotion is supposed to be, or they're very just straight to the point, like B minor, things like that. And the song's going to be in B minor. Ugh. It's very, uh, not redundant. What's the word? Straight to, straight to the point, basically. Carlo Scardo. Tango. This is an ultimate one. Prelude in G again with the the note key reference stuff. But Bach, he did something with this one as well. This one you hear in all the movies, all the credits, even the intros like a, a movie trailer, this is usually in the background. This is a phenomenal piece. Like it's just so passionate. Paganini. First of all, I don't recognize this. I've never heard this guy. Paganini. Niccolo Paganini. I like it. Paganini. Dun, 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 and how are they able, like, these are like the first people to create music, right? Or like, I guess you could say modern music or music that you can play on like a record player or something that has just trickled down. Like, I think artists today obviously take samples from previous music, but I think these are the only artists that are just extremely 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 so original because this isn't stuff that's been referenced this is all f like fluctuations and beats and melodies that came from their own head and i think that's also why i really appreciate classical because it's like so authentic and one of one like this for instance opera see how i said it adds together Strauss, the German guy? Uh, uh. Mozart. Big names, Mozart, Beethoven, Bach. But there's so many other artists that we've seen like the Nocinini guy. Are not arts, but composers. And their pieces are just as like iconic in my opinion. Like there's just, there's such a big world when it comes to classical and I feel like we barely scratch the top with the reactions, to be honest. Another Bach. American Patrol. Frank, oh, American classical composer. It's not all the Germans or the Europeans. We had some over here too. But America wasn't found until like the 1700s, so we were still late to the game. Eh, better to be late than not present at all. Mozart when he was young. You're telling me Mozart was Mozarting when he was 13? That's a genius, if you ask me. I wonder what his IQ was. Minute in G. Igor Stravinsky. Rite of Spring. Mm. That would have been nice to fall asleep to. Like, you, one minute you get these soft um, waltzes and lullabies, things that are very much spring, and then you have these chaotic pieces like this one from Giuseppe. Like you're flying into war. 
kind of reminds me of the national anthem. The name of the composer I don't recognize, but this this melody I do. Is that a success? Like you let me know if obviously you're not a your their name doesn't ring bells like Beethoven or Bach, but your your track, your song does, your composition does. Is that a success story? Like your music has outlived you. I would say that's a success story. This is a bop. And it is March. Wolfgang Mozart. See? Mozart's taking me by surprise because I thought he was the one with the faster melodies. But he actually, he does both, I guess. But Strauss, Strauss the first, but I just saw Strauss the second. Maybe he had a son who followed in his footsteps. And they started like a, like, you know, Warner Brothers or Capitol Records. Are there like companies for classical? I don't know. Another overture. So an overture, let's just Google it. What does overture mean? Because every time I see that word, it's a bop. Overture meaning in music. An overture, an orchestral piece in the beginning of an opera, a suite, a play, or other extended composition. An introduction to something more substantial. That makes perfect sense because you always feel like there's chaos about to exude. Like you always feel like you're running from something with the overtures. Tchaikovsky, we see him again. Swan Lake. The Queen of Sheba, Solomon, oh, this is biblical. Solomon, arrival of the Queen of Sheba. And then she cuts his hair off. He, You little rat. He gave you this beautiful piece of music just for you to take his powers. But again, the fact that this George guy, Handel, is able to then turn that into a beautiful piece of music is like iconic. Him and his wig. Eurovision theme? Wait, wait, what? So I, I would hit the, the nail on the head when I was like, these songs could also pass as like national anthems, thematic music. That's why you hear them so much in like movie trailers and the credits and outros and such. But that just reminded me, I need to do a Eurovision reaction. Cause we're, it's coming up, right? 2023, okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did by giving a like, subscribe for me here, and make sure you comment some other um, orchestral pieces that you want me to check out, or specifically composers, because in my mind, in my mind again, it's um, Beethoven, Bach, Strauss, but there's so many different people. This Charpentier, Chavosti, or whatever his name is, Panini, there's so many different people and countries and influence in composition that we need to check out. So comment some names down below, and I'll see you in the next video.